Welcome to Young Tuition. I'm glad to get some response to my uh, early uh, theoretical explanation for the uh, experiment result observed by Alpha Phonics. I'm waiting for more challenging question before we make another one. But today I'm going to put forward another new theory called transient electromagnetic longitudinal wave. But before that, can we have a closer look of his experimental data again? In his experimental data, apart from observe the delay of onset of the uh, standard uh, state uh, voltage, which is uh, quite understandable, that there's also some oscillation. Did you notice that? So this oscillation, no matter whether you measure this oscillation, the period would appear a constant. Now, how can we explain this oscillation? He didn't explain. Now here is my theoretical explanation, which is very simple. So basically, and uh, the argument is that whether the uh, electrical energy can uh, can jump from the battery to the bulb. So there are many so far. They have many hypotheses and uh, put forward by uh, Venetasia and his followers, but uh, none of them make sense. And including this one, including this guy. And uh, so, so why? So the question is very simple, straightforward. Can you answer me how this oscillation occur in the probably uh, this time scale? So this, uh, this time scale is about two microseconds. So from this diagram, you can estimate that the period of the oscillation is just about a few micro second right but how can we how can we explain let's jump to the conclusion i, I know you are you are waiting for this answer so here is a alpha phonics experiment set up and what he did he just measured the, the the voltage across a resistor and so that by almost no he convert you, you can convert that voltage into the current so that is uh, uh, a typical response we just saw in, uh, in his experimental result. Now, how can we explain this oscillation? Well, if we just use, use introduce, before, if, before that, can we jump across the line? Let's go to the 100 years ago, what's happened in at atomic level. Of course, you can remember that in 1913, Niels Bohr, uh, proposed his uh, new atomic theory for hydrogen atom, and in which that the stable orbit, namely the ground state, must be satisfy certain quantum condition. And this is actually the, the, the eventually the analytic uh, quantum condition, if which is empirical. We can talk about the quantum condition uh, uh, elsewhere, and uh, but this is a new sports quantum condition, namely the integral, the circle integral of the of the momentum, and uh, multiply the the, the the displacement interval were always equal to the integer multiply h h is a Planck constant. So why did he do so? Well, because before him, that uh, there is a very clever historian, and his brother is, is, is the experimental physicist, but uh, he is uh, basically trained in, uh, in, in history. So he knows the history. He knows how to use the analog, use, use energy to derive the new insight. So here it is. And uh, De Bloy, you know, De Bloy proposed that uh, the matter wave ideas. In particular, the wavelength of ma ma uh, matter wave can be described by the ratio of Planck constant and uh, uh, momentum, linear momentum. So if you know this idea of matter wave, the Bloch's wavelength, then you can easily interpret all condition 
in terms of this uh, standing wave. So if you just expand this circle into this uh, straight line, which is correspond to the, the circumference of the, of the, of the first uh, uh, orbit or ground state, you can see that the, if you just apply the de Blois wave idea, then the circumference will be, in this case, exactly equal to one wavelength of the Bloy wavelength. So two pi r were equal to lambda. Substituting the de Blois formula, h over p for lambda, we can simply rewrite this equation as two pi r multiplied p equal to Planck constant. So that is why the Bohr got this is a special case of Bohr's condition. Okay, be patient. So say what well, you might say, what are you talking about? We are talking about the uh, uh, Veritasian's uh, great uh, claims uh, in, in, about uh, electricity. So why did you mention the Bohr's mod? Well, if you know this background, it's very easy, it's straightforward to come up with this idea, namely the standing wave. So if we just assume that uh, the length of the a wire is uh, uh, one kilometers as, uh, as used by uh, alpha uh, phonics, then we, if we just extend this whole uh, secret into a straight line, you can see that this is positive terminal, I call it anode. This is a negative terminal of battery, I call it a cathode. So you can see that by analogy with Bohr's atomic theory, we can assume that there exists a certain wave whose wavelength will be equal to the circumference, the, the, the total length of the wire, which is L. Okay. Now, if we assume this wave travel at the speed of light, then we can apply this single logic that the speed of light equal to number divided by the period. So the period of the oscillation can be estimated as 3.3 microsecond. So this is a theory. How is the experiment? Well, if I just enlarge his experimental result, that's his experimental result. I hope he, he would provide a proper display next time that from this tilt uh, computer screen, I can roughly work out that the, 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 the transient, the, hot, the, the before the onset of a stable condition, this time interval is about 1.6 microsecond. So from this diagram, you can see the peak to peak distance should be very close to 3.2. So this experimental result, not bad, not bad at all. Theory, theoretical estimate is a 3.3, experimental 3.2. That's the same, that is my explanation. But to, to, to adjust, to, to, to actually use this explanation, we have make another great assumption, which is what we call the transient electromagnetic longitudinal wave or tail wave in short. So from here in this diagram, you can see that Again, the origin kind of uh, line represent the conductor wire and these blue circles represent electron. So at a certain transient time moment, if you take a photo in the presence of this tail wave, then you should be able to see that uh, similar to the sun, the density of electron will have a certain distribution. Therefore, this distribution can be reasonably described by a longitudinal wave, not transient. The well no uh, electromagnetic wave implied in uh, Maxwell's equations are always uh, transverse. But uh, here we are talking about electromagnetic wave, which is longitudinal. Okay, that is caused by the oscillation, local oscillation of electron. So that is why the density of the uh, electron will, will periodically change if you just measure that uh, the voltage or current 
at a particular position in the circuit. So that is a, that is a, a new theory which can be used to explain the, uh, the new experiment result. Of course, if uh, by analogy of studying the atom, and you may ask that uh, perhaps we can also, we don't have to confine to the, uh, the, the experiment, original experimental setup proposed by Viratasium. We can actually use extend it to, to set up this uh, electrical circuit as a circle. Okay. So what would happen again? So this is the radius of this uh, huge circle. Then my prediction give you that you can also not only to work out, it is possible not only observe the fundamental uh, harmonic of the, uh, of the transient electromagnetic longitude in a way, but also it's possible to observe higher harmonics. Okay, I will stop here and let you think. Please uh, click like and subscribe my channel so that I will continue making very interesting short videos on this subject and other objects. Goodbye.